turns out that names and descriptions are important, so when something is described as a limited skill in Unicorn Overlord, it really is limited. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and welcome back to the channel. Unicorn Overlord. Hello everyone, if you enjoy what I do, my coverage of Unicorn Overlord, little guide and description videos like this, more in-depth coverage, gameplay, commentary, reviews, etc., a like on this video and a subscription to the channel would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. So what is the topic of the day today? It's a quick little one, but it's something that I wanted to bring up because I feel like a lot of people have been very confused about this and I've gotten a lot of questions about it. Limited skills. In particular, these types of skills right here, like Haste and Strike on my Swordmaster, that has the trait limited. Limited skills are skills that trigger at the start of a battle, and they have a lot of power in that because it means that they can go off before other normal abilities start to activate. Kind of like an instant spell, if you think about that in terms of magic, that's kind of the way you want to view this. And so, of course, your first reaction might be to stack up on these, right? Like, well, if I can get one free shot in at the beginning of a fight, what if I can get three free shots in with three different sword masters, right? And potentially nuke one, maybe even two enemies. Fun idea. Vanillaware thought about why that would be busted, and uh, so there's a reason that something is called limited. If a skill is limited, that means that only one skill of that type can activate at the beginning of a fight. This means that one hasten strike, two hasten strike, three hasten strikes, doesn't matter. Only one of them will trigger. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, okay, I mean, that's that's fine, that's, okay, it's a little bit of a shame, I can't just turn half of my squad into a whirlwind of death before the fight even really begins, but, like, what if I incorporate other stuff, like, say, a Viking's Warhorn, right? That's a limited skill, it'll trigger at the start of a battle, make all allies' attack skills unguardable, great, then we can jump in with our hasten strikes and bada-bing, bada-boom, like, we can still get one in for free for completely full damage because it'll be unguardable, right? Even if I can't get all three, one unguardable hit is still good, right? Not quite, because just the fact that it's a limited skill means that you can still only trigger one of them. It's kind of a big deal. Let me show you. We'll prove this right here. We'll jump into a mock battle really quick. This is something that is very easy to lose track of. It can be very easy to forget that a skill that's starting at the beginning of a battle is probably going to be a limited skill. We'll load in here with our Swordmaster squad against this squad with Amalia at its head, and we'll show exactly what happens here. And this will be interesting, because you'll see that even if you can only use one limited skill at the start of a battle, there's a lot of things that can happen. So the enemy's Swordmaster triggers his Hasten Strike. That causes our Viking to come in with his Frenzied Strike, then their Cleric purifies the debuffs, and their Breaker enrages, and Amalia comes in with the Wild Kick because our Fighter guarded the initial Hasten Strike, which triggers a Following Slash, and then we get our Hasten Strike. So there was a ton that happened there. You'll notice none of our guys use any of their other limited skills because they can't, right? Only one is allowed to activate, and it's going to be the character that has the highest initiative, but the power of these limited skills is that you can trigger all of these extra effects off of them. Just one hasten strike on the enemy team caused a chain reaction of skills between both of our teams here that set off an entire grouping of attacks. And that is really cool. And it's part of the reason that a limited skill is, you know, limited. You're only going to be able to use one at the start of a fight because otherwise, imagine how you'd just be chaining stuff together forever, right? It would be insane. But, so you can see here how this is important to keep track of, because, again, like, there's a lot of lost potential. Part of the advantage of Swordmasters is that they can jump in at the start of a fight and get that free hit in. It's not the only thing that they're good at. You can make a squad of Swordmasters work. In fact, this squad actually only has one Swordmaster using Hasten Strike in a normal combat situation. I just put a bunch of limited skills on here to show you guys that it doesn't work, right? Because I do think that is important information to have when you're putting together a squad. Also, the Swordmaster squad gets absolutely bodied by Amalia's team, but that's kind of part of the nature of the way her team is set up, so I'm not particularly bothered about it. Um, but then the question might be, right, so how do you want to incorporate limited skills into your squads? You want one, and only one, and you're going to want the one that has the greatest impact for the squad at hand. Let's take a look at my Trinity Reign squad here. That is my huge, doubled combo damage team. Now, the most important part of this is hastened action. This is something that we have on Renee the Sorceress using Lips Ring. It is a limited skill. It activates at the start of a battle and it grants an ally max initiative for their next action. Cannot target self. I have this set up so that it targets our back row unit with the least initiative. So Luana the Were Owl has 40 initiative. Valerie has 16. 
We want Valerie to be able to get instant initiative because of the fact that she has the Millennium Scepter and Trinity Rain. We don't actually need this focus site here. This is going to allow her to immediately begin to charge her skill, which will then cause Luana to use Quick Impetus on her to give her another action and then cast Millennium Scepter like it was nothing. Then I had switched her accessory here because she was getting blinded, but with the Magia Soul, she will then immediately recast the spell again for a massive amount of AoE damage on the entire enemy squad. And this only works because we have the appropriate limited skill in hastened action set up and ready to go here. In a different squad, you might want something completely different. Let's take a look over here at Gregor's unit. This is the Super Tax Bros squad that I've grown quite fond of, and which I recently incorporated a Viking into to give you know defense debuffs and generally make it so that the lads are dealing more damage. Part of that is going to be the Warhorn skill that Vikings pick up. Activates at the start of a battle, makes all allies' attack skills unguardable. Now, even if we're dealing with heavy armor opponents, all of these chained bastards crosses and following slashes and all this nonsense that Lance Snacks are able to bring to the table are going to be dealing maximum damage. Nothing's going to be guarding against that. And that's a huge boost for them. To say nothing of the fact that, you know, then we'll be able to rend defense and all that type of fun stuff. It's a very good time. Now, I do want to point out, while most limited skills do start at the beginning of battle, there are some that do not. And for that, we can look at our Legionnaire here. He has two limited skills, Heavy Cover and Row Cover. Row cover activates before an ally is attacked and covers a row of allies with a medium guard, whereas heavy cover activates before an ally is attacked and covers an ally with a heavy guard. These are limited because you don't want to be able to just, like, chain guards together infinitely. That would get really funny. You just have a stack of five legionnaires lined up in front of each other, each guy taking the hit for the guy who was taking a hit for the guy who was taking a hit for the last guy who was initially going to be the target of the attack. It'd be really silly. So, you can only have one guard happen per like round of action, per round of combat on a particular target. Uh, and that makes things a little bit more reasonable in that regard. So when you're looking at your limited skills, then what do you really want to focus on? Well, again, it depends on the type of squad that you have going on, but I prefer, especially in the later game, things that are going to set up combos, like what you can see up here in my Trinity Rain team that we talked about, or things that are going to buff your entire squad like with the Viking here. I could have a limited skill on my Legionnaire here, Bunker Stance, which comes from his Black Silver Pavice. Activates at the start of a battle, gives him minus 30 initiative, but plus 40% physical defense and plus 40% guard rate. This would turn him into an absolute unit of a tank, and in certain situations, depending on maybe the enemy squad that we're fighting, I might want to switch that tactic on, slot it in there, and turn off my Viking's Warhorn, so that way I can guarantee that my Legionnaire is going to be able to absorb a ton of damage. And there's going to be situations where I use that. But the majority of the time, I would prefer to have this squad-wide buff from my Viking to maximize our damage, as that's the point of the team. And that's what you always need to be looking for when you're choosing a limited skill to use in a given squad. And if you can slot one into any given unit, I would say you probably should. You know, if you have one available on your equipment or on the classes that happen to be in that squad or whatever. But it's a nice little boost. And something like, say, a Swordmaster's Hasten to Strike, especially later on in the game, Really not the most useful thing. Like, it's free damage, and that's nice. If you're fighting a squishy set of enemy units, and maybe this can just pop one at the beginning of the fight, that's cool. But something that's going to synergize better with your entire team, to me, is a much more worthwhile investment when it comes to these limited skills. Take, for example, the Cursed Swamp skill that Druids get. Activates at the start of a battle, inflicts initiative minus 10 and evasion minus 30 on all enemies, and inflicts passive points minus 1 to cavalry targets. I love this for my cavalry squad here, as it lets them potentially get a round of attacks in before they even ever start getting hit. And while, yes, my Doom Knights do want to take some damage so that to, they can boost their attack, like they're still going to use their own HP to deal damage to the enemy and burn them, and that's great, because then they can still get their own buffs, they can put a burn on the enemies so that when they start to actually take their turns after the initiative reduction allows them to go, they'll start to burn immediately. So we're getting free damage in that we might not otherwise just because we used this limited skill to reduce our target's initiative and evasion. There's a bunch of good stuff like that, and I highly recommend as you're looking through your different classes and your different items, picking limited skills that are going to have the biggest net benefit for your entire squad, not just one unit that's going to be getting in like one attack or defense boost, unless you desperately need that one attack or that one defense boost. 
As far as any other limited skills are concerned, just go through and make sure that you don't have unnecessary superfluous stuff on that could wind up interfering with things. I can't tell you the number of times that I've had a character level up and their classes unlocked a skill that I didn't realize was limited, and then that was interfering with the setup that I had going on for the rest of the squad, and it took me ages to figure it out. It's like, oh, because this skill that I just learned is limited, I don't even want it to activate, and it's getting in the way of everything. This happens to me constantly with rogues. Where's one of my rogues here? Because they have their skill that they get, Sneaking Edge. Ranged, uncoverable, limited. Activates at the start of a battle, attack a single enemy with a first strike, inflicts guard seal and passive seal. Listen, that might be great. Maybe that's exactly what you need to do to either try and pop a dangerous enemy unit or prevent something that's going to absorb a bunch of hits from guarding or p using a big scary passive ability, whatever, and you just have this on a rogue to neutralize that. Cool, great. But a total 100 physical potency attack on one target that hits them with guard seal and passive seal, not the most powerful thing, especially when, again, you consider it like Warhorn or Cursed Swamp or anything like that. It's a little bit more niche, but it can get in the way of the way your squad is supposed to function. So keep an eye on your skills as you're unlocking them. And if something is a limited skill, make sure that you don't leave it on if it's going to conflict with something that you're relying on to make a unit work the way that you want them to work. With that said, though, that's pretty much all there is to talk about on this one. Keep an eye out for limited skills, pick the ones that are going to be the most efficient for your units, and maybe once I've cleared one run of the game and I've got all the classes at my disposal, I can do a video talking about every limited skill and where I think you should use them, or maybe do a tier list about them, something along those lines. I just want to wait until I have access to all of the classes before I try to start putting something like that together. But if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on limited skills in general, what ones you like and dislike, and I hope you look very much forward to my next video. It should be the next episode in the comprehensive class overview. That's actually what I was planning to have out today, but I couldn't quite get the script done in time. So I pushed it back and we're talking about limited skills instead. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.